True or false, you cannot road trip in an electric vehicle. Oh, you absolutely can. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I try to make honest educational videos, not clickbait. Driving an EV long distance is not the same experience as driving a gas powered vehicle. So what should you expect? There's no standard definition for a road trip. Where I live, people go up north on the weekends, and they use that as their reasons for why they could never own an EV. I'm here to tell you that 200 miles is nothing. If you don't want to own an EV, just say you don't want to own one. A 200-mile drive a couple times a summer isn't the thing that's stopping you. 300 miles? Keep going. 600 miles? Now we're talking. How about 800 miles? I just did that in one day. And honestly, I, I don't recommend that many miles in any vehicle, not gasoline, not electric, and especially not in one day. In a bit, I'll show you two different apps that you can download for free and play around with to get an idea of what a long distance drive is like in an EV. But first, let's acknowledge that not all electric vehicles are created equally. In North America, 300 miles is the magic number that all automakers want to say they can meet or exceed. For driving around town on a daily basis, 300 miles is more than you will ever need. So you're paying extra for something you don't need. For longer drives, I would much rather have an electric vehicle that charges quickly and dependably, even if it doesn't get 300 miles of range. I started off this video telling you that you can absolutely road trip in an EV. I will acknowledge that depending on where you're going, some places are easier than others. In my recent drive from Boston to Detroit, I complained that the Mass Turnpike has no charging at their service plazas. However, you go a mile or two off the highway and there are plenty of options. This is where the type of car you own and the capabilities of the charging of its structure can be at odds. And it can be mind-numbingly painful to explain. It's slowly getting better, but it's going to take years for us to gravitate towards one Tesla NAX standard. In my opinion, this is where people are starting to check out with EVs. Hey, hey, don't stop this video. I, I want to show you the apps. But just leave it to say that the technology is complex at first, but it's going to get easier to understand, and hopefully videos like this help. To get some idea of how driving an EV on a long drive is different than a gasoline car, there's two apps I want you to check out. The Tesla app you know. The other one is called a Better Route Planner, ABRP. Let's start with the Tesla app. When you go into it, there are some features. You can charge your non-Tesla, home charging, go anywhere. This is where I want to focus on. This is a route planner for owners. And if you want to share your location, you can. So let's start off saying we're going to start off at Detroit Airport, DTW, and we're going to go to Chicago O'Hare Airport. So that's about 300 mile drive. And you can change which Tesla model you're going to drive in theory. Let's select the Tesla Model Y long range. That's the, the Model Y is a best selling vehicle in the world, by the way, not just EVs, all vehicles. And it's going to calculate an approximate route. Now, if you owned a Tesla, it would factor in lots of other things like where you're starting off from a state of charge. In this case, it's going to recommend a stop outside of Kalamazoo, Michigan for a 45 minute charge. So on the same drive in a non-electric vehicle, you would probably stop for gas. Let's say that's 10 minutes. If you use a restroom, that's 15, grab something to eat, 20 minutes. So yeah, a combustion engine vehicle will get you there faster. I want to be clear about that. But the difference is not hours, it's minutes. The supercharger happens to be at a Meyer store that's a Midwest Superstore. It is a long walk to the front store, but inside there are restrooms, a deli counter, and there's also Sandy the Penny Pony. All Meyer stores have one, and yes, it's only a penny to ride. When you actually jump into your Tesla, it will take into account other details like your current battery state of charge, traffic conditions, how busy their superchargers are, so it will make adjustments to your travel and charging plans automatically. That's one of Tesla's strengths. They make driving and charging easy to understand for any driver. A better route planner has way more options and features than the Tesla app, but that's also what makes it more complicated too. For example, you can adjust the starting charge that your vehicle has. So if it only has 30% charge when you start your trip, you can adjust that and it'll calculate that in. 
let's assume we start with 80% and do that same trip from Detroit Metro Airport to Chicago O'Hare. Now, in this case, it's calculating it for a Kia EV6 long range, that same vehicle that I got when I left Boston. And you can do other things too. You can determine what battery state of charge you want to arrive at. You can adjust to say, I want to make fewer stops, but charge longer or more frequent stops, but charge shorter periods of time based on your preference for how many stops you want to make. Calculate the route. And in this case, for that vehicle, it's going to recommend two stops, one close to where that Tesla was, but at a different station, because again, the Kia EV6 doesn't use the Tesla NAX plug currently. It relies on a different network of chargers, but one is a relatively short stop, 13 minutes. The other is just 11 minutes. It does take into account when calculating the distance and the time it takes, how long it's going to take to get off the highway. So it does add a couple of minutes for that. So it's being fair in its calculation for the time it takes to travel that range. Now you can switch to a different vehicle, in this case, that Hyundai Kona EV that I talked about, and the numbers come out differently. It recommends one longer duration stop rather than two shorter duration stop. Again, that's a, something you can go into settings and change if you want to. In my opinion, a better route planner is better than the navigation built into some non-Tesla vehicles. Some people prefer to use it and pay the premium subscription version, which takes into account live traffic data, live availability of charging station, and it allows you to project it using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The free version, however, doesn't do those features. You have to pay for it. In summary, yes, you can road trip an electric vehicle. The limiting factor is most likely you, the human behind the wheel. No, travel time will not be as fast as in a gas car, but the difference is only going to be minutes, not hours, like some skeptics will tell you. No, EV charging is not as easy to find as gas. Availability and reliability need to improve. Some people have horror stories about broken chargers. In my travels, I've had problems that forced me to use a different station, but nothing worse than that. If you're considering an EV, how fast it charges is more important than how far it can go on a single charge. If this all seems complicated, yeah, it kind of is. Car manufacturers and EV charging providers need to do a better job. Progress is being made slowly. Confusion and fear-mongering are leading people to avoid buying an EV. That's why I think it's important to remind ourselves, why are we doing this? Climate change. It's real, not a hoax. I wish it were a hoax. Battery electric vehicles even if they get all their electricity from coal and taking into account the manufacturing of the battery, it produces less CO2 over its lifetime. Mix in renewables and the savings add up quickly. If you're not ready to give up that gas-powered SUV or minivan for road trips, then make an EV that other car in your driveway, the one you use to commute or to run errands. And if you ever need to use that EV for a longer trip, don't worry, you can do it. Thanks for watching.